So excuse the fact that I am in the hot tub, but much as it's been sunny in England today, it's also bloody freezing. There's a really cold breeze coming through. Um, but this is where I do my best thinking. And I've been thinking a lot about what Ashton, Ashton Forbes, if you're not familiar, but hopefully you are, has been doing with the last six or eight months of investigation into the disappearance of MH370, the Malaysian airline that in March 2014 disappeared, which in itself is strange enough. But as you will know, if you've been following all the work that Ashton and his team of supporters have been doing, including myself, even if, and hopefully he has found the how it disappeared, we still don't know why it was disappeared, who exactly was behind it, although we might suspect the US military. We then have to rationale how the US military planned it. Where did the orbs come from? Are they organic orbs that are plasma based that appear through some sort of quantum physics? possible. We look at the thunderstorm machine, we see what Malcolm Campbell is doing, and we see the creation of these tiny little bubbles that effectively, um, when we're pumping oxygen into the thunderstorm machine, uh, we reduce carbon monoxide um, down to zero, we reduce the carbon dioxide down to near zero, and we cause a chemical process that people said was impossible before. So let's not rule anything out. But if the orbs were not organic, what if these orbs are hardware? They are spherical vehicles under a propulsion control. And if so, where did they come from? Because they would have had to have been launched from somewhere in order to do what they were doing, which Ashton believes, and we're working on the premise that what he's done is correct, that the orbs were fundamental in creating the conditions that meant the aeroplane disappeared. So we need to know, was it the US military? How did they launch the orbs? But more importantly, and what I want to focus on is why. Why would the US military not just want to take out a plane and a passenger plane, because they could have, if it was an experiment, taken out a military plane or an unmanned plane or a plane belonging to China or Iran which were the two countries that at the time in 2014, the United States was having most conflict with, albeit some of it behind the scenes. But what I've started investigating is going through some of the fascinating WikiLeaks files, emails between the NSA, the FBI, the CIA, and geopolitical contacts, some of which are giving me fascinating bits of information. But how much of it is relevant? how much of it might be connected. We have to find out, A, was it definitely the US military to plan this? B, why? Was it to do with needing to get rid of certain passengers on the plane, or data that was on the plane, or hardware that was on the plane? So was it specific to certain people or person on that plane that was in some way threatening the US government, potentially to reveal secrets? Or was it a demonstration exercise? Because we know that the Soviets were way advanced in this sort of advanced technology and that had used advanced technology even back to the 70s. So was it a display of, look at us, we are the US military, look what we can do? Or was it a message particularly to China because as you will come to see when I share some of the information I've now collated, there was a lot going on with China that we were not privy to. Similarly with Iran, which at the moment is even more relevant. And also there is that big question of what was happening with Malaysia itself, because we know there was a very, very indebted government. What happened in the years following the actual prime minister of Malaysia was effectively jailed, thrown out of his position. It was the largest world's financial scandal taking place in Malaysia. So we can't rule that out either. We can't rule out the fact that we know Goldman Sachs and the Department of Justice were also involved in that. There is too much information. And as I said, this is a jigsaw with many pieces. I want to work on the basis that Ashton is totally on the ball. He may not have 100% of it right, but he has got 
a lot of information which I want to substantiate by letting him have the how and now I want your help with my information to find out why and who was behind it. Are you up for it? Keep following. And I'm going to be doing some live YouTubes and maybe I might even get live on X. But I need help. You probably all say that. But I'm serious. We need to know if Ashton is correct, why? Who did it? And why that aeroplane? Why then? Let's get on it. Thanks for listening.